there's a quantum revolution going on with exciting new opportunities. And the question is, what does that all mean? Is it really a revolution? Is it hype? Is it really a new technology that's um, going for the long term? And then what is it and why is everybody so excited about quantum? So let's try and map out the ABCDEs of quantum. So these are bits, I'm calling them quantum bits and you're gonna to have to accept that for the moment. But I'm gonna say, let's say these are two basis states. What do basis states mean? It means just like in a digital world, we have two kinds of um, basic units, either on or off, zero or one. So this is still the basis states of the quantum world, but What's different now is something that may be weird to you, that the status of the information is not either zero or one, but it's a probability function. We express this probability. We like to use this word psi. It means a wave function. I'm going to show you uh, this a wave function like this. And we're going to say it's some combination of zero and one. Now, what does that mean? These two states, actually, the fact is these two states make up an, an entirety, an entirety that sort of looks wave-like, an entirety that is a superposition of zero and one. And what this means is that this, this existence of a state, which is a piece of information, can be zero, it can be one, but it can be anything in between. The information lies there in the superposition of these two states. In the quantum mechanical world, we represent every object by a wave function by saying this wave-like nature means I don't know exactly where this particle that holds information is. It is distributed in space. It has a probability. Now let's assume that I have more than two qubits. I have a whole bunch of them interacting and this flashing zero and one means that any given time, each of those qubits could be zero, could be one or anything in between. And the next important concept about quantum and quantum information is that these are all entangled. That is, it's like a herd mentality, if you will, that um, that there is a relationship between each of these separate units of information. That's what entanglement means. And it also means that this herd, that information is not just resident in any one member of the herd, it's resident in the entire population. These quantum effects, this incredible density of information that we haven't yet been able to exploit means that the way we deal with acquiring, storing, sending, processing information is just turned on its head. If it goes faster, higher density information, maybe we could have quantum computing. How do we talk quantum and will it be useful? If the information is encoded not in any one individual, in any one individual bit, but throughout this entity, what could I do with that? How might I um, sort of exercise a protocol or a language or basically directions to this um, quantum state um, where I could get some value out of it? It was a first demonstration of a language that spoke to qubits and what uniquely defined qubits. The question is, so immediately this stimulated a huge interest, both in the hardware and in the software um, regime where people kept thinking, are there any other quantum algorithms that would show an advantage for quantum computing? We don't yet know. If there are those algorithms that are general enough, that are prolific enough, that we actually get a sizable advantage um, in computation. The basic deal is that if you send a quantum key, 
The fact is that if as soon as Eve tries to read it, Bob and Alice will know. Here is the major issue. D, not for data, but for decoherence, which is a major limitation to a technology that inherently assumes that each of those qubits, even in the herd, has a well-defined relationship to all of its neighbors and sort of a well-defined quantum state. Take a technology from this amazing promise of what single qubits could do to a full technology. We have to understand that we're gonna have to live with decoherence for a while, for a long while maybe. We gotta deal with the real world, it's noisy. There are gonna be errors. We need error correction. There are gonna be lots of things that are gonna le uh, lead to decoherence. It's noisy. We're not at the end, we're intermediate. But the point of this term means that even if we're in the regime of NISQ, there's a hell of a lot we can learn. Entrepreneurship. What are the commercial prospects for quantum now? This is incredible that something that is still so blue sky science, that is so sensitive to decoherence at the ultimate level of atoms interacting with atoms has given rise at this point in time to commercial ideas that are going out into the marketplace.